that's the way I am. If I like you, I talk to you and I'm friendly with you. If I don't like you, I'd say hello, goodbye, or I'll tell you, you know, where you can go. And I'll tell you how high to fly. <laughs> I'm outspoken, aren't I? And I, tell, and I told you all about the family, how to accept them, how to get along with them, who did this and who did that, yep. and their little contrariness and everything, and I've never told you a lie, have I? I was seven years old when I was put in the kitchen to make biscuits and my first ones, they kind of come out hard. And uh, my daddy, he sat there and he said, I could knock the damn side of the barn down with these damn biscuits. They so hard, you just knock the wall down. And I bawled up and squalled. And then he was going to whip me because I was squalling. And uh, my grandfather carried me to the cow pen and taught me how to milk cows when I was seven years old. And I've been milking cows ever since. You haven't milked a cow in a while, have you? Not a while, but I sure know how to squeeze a tit, and I'll tell you something else. You don't pump the tail to get the milk out. I had met Diane on the internet, and well, she finally come down, and we met, and we discussed it and talked about it. She was in a Hancock fabric store business, and I was in construction at the time. So we both decided when she came and took a look at it, that she said, I said, we can make something out of it. And she agreed, and she, gave her job up and I gave mine up. We kind of retired without getting paid and pitched in our 401s and cashed it in and we took it over. Yeah, well, I met her I met her online. So, I mean, you know, before I actually seen her, we'd, we'd played games about like, like Yahoo Spades and stuff like that. That's all it was. And that's your club there on the internet? Yep, that's yeah. the Living Bear Club. The Night Hawks. Too. They got me signed up with it. I hadn't uh, played lately. A gentleman that owns it. And, uh, gentleman and a lady that owns it. One lives in Missouri now and he lives in a little community called North South Carolina and we joined it with them. We we met there and when she finally finally got the courage to come down here after she was convinced I was an axe murderer <laughs> and we met and well I actually just fell in love but I was hesitant on, on the old I do thing. Then I think I had a few too many one evening and I made the promise that my brother <laughs> made me now, stand up to. this was a typical example. I gotta tell you this little story. This is a typical example of, of the difference between where I came from and where Bobby came from. When we first took the store over, Bobby says to me, he says, one of the first things we gotta do when we open that store, we don't allow credit. And I looked at him and I said, Bobby, I said, I don't understand. I said, I said, everybody nowadays has credit cards. Everybody's got credit cards. I mean, you got to, you got to take credit. And he says, no, I mean credit. And I said, I had no idea what he was talking about. Then he started telling me the story about how the previous owners and people in the past, people would come into the store and say, buy something. And they'd say, well, I don't have the money, but if you put it on my account, I'll pay you on Thursday. And I just looked at him and I started laughing. I said, if you would to walk into a store in any major city and say, I don't have the money for this, but I'll pay you on Thursday, they would laugh you out the door or call the police. So we had a little different understanding of the what credit. What trying to say is I watched every person that, from my mother, my brother, my niece, our relatives, everybody that's ever took this business and tried to make something out of it, every one of them is folded for credit. Every one of them. Well, I met him on the internet uh, about a year and a half ago. I came last summer for a visit for a few months and then I went back home and kept in touch with him, of course, over the internet and they needed help in the deli, so they asked me to come back and I, I said, sure, I loved it here. Of course, I stayed for well, about three months. I was supposed to just come for a little visit, but it turned into, you know, something. I liked it, and they liked having me around, so I stayed for about three months, and then I went back home for, let's see, about two months. And then during hunting season, our busy season, they needed help in the deli. They couldn't keep anybody that was as experienced as I am and asked me to come back, so I, I did. So now I'm a permanent fixture. Oh. I hope so, anyways. My grandmother did all the carpenters. There was all of them carpenters. All the men in the family was carpenters. My grandmother, she built her own pantries and everything. If the gate fell down, Grandpa couldn't fix it. Grandma went out there and fixed it. We, I helped her put a fence up with my, one of my first cousins. He was a young guy standing over living with her at the time. He's, 15, 16 years old, 
and we put a, a quarter of a mile of fence up, me and her and him, and she was up in her late 60s. I used to stay with Grandma a lot and lived over there with her whenever my husband was overseas and I'd come and help Mom in the store and I'd stay over there across the creek the, with my uh, grandmother. Well, of course, the atmosphere, the way everybody uh, knows each other, the way everybody, it's its a lot different than where I'm from. It's just uh, uh, more relaxed, laid back, you know, it's not, a, not real high stressed and uh, it's just a good little country store. What's admirable is not only would mom run the store by herself, she'd also have, uh, she'd cook dinner and everything like that, and then the customers that didn't even know her would come in and they were welcome to sit down and eat. Because we lived right here in the Everybody store. Everybody eat around here. Everybody. I'm we talking about from law enforcement, game wardens, and neighbors, and cow. just outright strangers that come in. I've, I've worked, we've had cows, hogs, horses, mules. I plow, I was in a field plowing when I was 10 years old. Daddy, I was the oldest and daddy made a man out of me and I had to lift. I run the planter and he run the fertilizer, uh, the, open the rows up and I come behind him with the other one. He, I plowed it with a more gentle or a mule and he plowed with the one old lady. She was a kind of a wild thing and he could handle her better. And old Pete, he would just plug along. And the kids would ride by and he'd keep me out of school and they raised hell and made him make me go back to school and I'd help him plant the fields. And I had to hoe and chop cotton, pick cotton, pick blueberries, pick up pecans. There wasn't nothing much I didn't have to do. I, I'm alive today because I did do all that. Hard work never killed nobody. I can lay down side of them and go to sleep.